This is Russ Anderson. Today I'd like to talk about perspective. What is it that Synthize is looking for to help be able to accurately find the distance to all the different features in the shot? And how can you understand what shots are going to be easy, what shots are going to be hard as you're looking at a shot? So I'd like to start by going back to probably junior high school when you're doing geometry and trigonometry and there is a standard sort of problem where you had two observers on the hills, shoreline, overlooking the ocean and off in the distance there's, there's a sailboat. You want to know how far away is that sailboat. So back in trigonometry class you do something where you'd measure the distance between the two observers on the shoreline and then you'd measure the angle between that baseline and the direction to the sailboat for each of those two observers. And from that baseline and those two angles, you can figure out how far away the sailboat is. And that's kind of the basic triangulation that Synthize is using internally. It's doing stuff that's a lot more complicated and you know, using much more data to do it, but basically when you want to think about how accurately is the process going to work? You need to think about this basic triangle. How far apart are the cameras? How far away is the object? So in a situation like this, the process can be fairly accurate. And to think about the accuracy, all you have to do is, is think about what happens at the camera. The camera is kind of a measurement device in its own right, where the camera sensor has you know, 1,000 pixels, 2,000 pixels, whatever across, and that's kind of the basic yardstick. And you've got a line of sight to, to your particular target, and here you know, it, it's a one particular pixel, and if you move just a little bit over, you know, there's the next pixel. And that corresponds to a certain distance out here where the target is. So, depending on how many pixels you have, how far away the object is, that's a different distance. And when you're triangulating like this, you get kind of the intersection of those two different triangles, and that says how far away or how near um, can the boat or feature be and still fall in those same pixels inside each of the two cameras. So, if you have a shot, this is, this is the beginning of the shot, this is the end of the shot, or it could be anywhere in the middle where it's furthest away. Now, if the picture looks like this, here I've got a very narrow and skinny sort of triangle. Now, I can't really very accurately determine where and how far away the feature is. Because basically the, the same pixels would be involved sort of pretty much no matter how far away the, uh, the target is. And in the limiting case, you get down to this situation where here's the, the camera and it's sitting on a tripod and now I'm just spinning the tripod around. And the line of sight to the target is, is always the same. So it's falling on a different pixel inside the camera as the camera is moving around. But the line of sight is the same and there's no triangle at all. So there's no way to determine the distance to the target. And you know, we call that a far tracker. There's only a distance to it. You'll see it displayed within Synthize. Uh, at, always at a fixed distance away from the camera that's determined just by the world size value. That's just kind of arbitrary. So that's what happens when you have a tripod mode shot. Now that Synthize 2008 now handles some sorts of shots where the camera can move along for a while, then come to a spot where it stays still, and then it spins to a different direction, and then maybe it even continues moving again. And while you can get a nice solution for the trackers during this part of the 
shot and figure out how far away things are. During the panning part, any of those trackers that are visible only during the panning part, they're all far trackers. You can't determine how far they are. Then once you start translating again, uh, perhaps you can get some distances to some trackers again. So the hold mode processing takes all this into account and gives you a kind of a combination of those different kinds of trackers. So I, what I hope you get from this is that whenever you're looking at a shot and you think about how it was made, you should be thinking about what is this baseline between the two cameras? How, how long is that distance compared to the distance to the features? So, you know, the same foot may be a perfectly adequate baseline for something that's only two feet away. But that same foot between the two trackers isn't really going to help you very much if the thing that you're looking at is actually, you know, 100 meters away. So you have to keep in mind what the relationship is between those two values and determining how good of a shot it's going to be, um, whether you're going to have tripod mode or uh, a mixture, you know, a hold mode shot or whatever. And one other thing to think about also is just what are the range of distances that are involved in the shot. If everything is a fixed distance away, there's a lot less information than if some things are up closer and some things are farther away. Because when you can see both those different kinds of distances, that lets it determine what kind of, you know, exactly what the motion was more accurately. Thanks a lot. Hope this helps you understand what you're looking at and what you're looking for when you have a shot.